Hi there folks, my name's James and this is a quick instruction video on how to make a minion from Despicable Me for a fancy dress party. Okay, so the actual time taken for two people to create three minions was about 24 hours, excluding about five hours worth of shopping around for materials. So overall, working about eight hours a day, we, we did about three to four days worth of, uh, of making this stuff. Uh, the overall material cost was around about £90 for all three, so that came out to be about £30 per minion. Uh, also, the amount of tools that were required weren't actually that many. In terms of tools you're likely to need, uh, we found the following was very useful. So one marker pen, a set of felt tip pens, an A4 plastic folder, not the wallets, but actual plastic folder, preferably without a seam line so that you can fold it out to A3 size, uh, a hole punch or a sort of belt hole punching tool, a craft knife or a Stanley knife, obviously use caution, didn't do anything silly, uh, fabric scissors and tough scissors would be quite useful. A stapler, a needle and some yellow thread and some strong black thread. A hacksaw with spare blades if necessary, again be careful. Uh, a tape measure, or two tape measures in fact, one builder's tape measure and one fabric tape measure so you can sort of do flexible things and also draw straight lines. Uh, a roll of electrical tape, a couple of balls of string, sellotape, a lot of sellotape uh, and also a lot of double-sided sticky tape. Not the foam stuff. The foam stuff didn't work. In terms of materials, you're going to need three 60 centimeter diameter children's hula hoops, three bamboo sticks at least one meter long, about a meter of sticky Velcro, about a one meter by 20 centimeter strip of acetate, so the kind of OHP projection film, three millimeter thick insulation foam, and we used about 1.2 meters by five meters of it, which comes on a roll. Uh, and in materials, we use 2.5 by 1.2 meters worth of blue and 3.5 by 1.1 meters worth of yellow, again came on a roll. And about a meter squared of loose weave white material for the eyes that you can also see through. You want to need standard elastic, we used about 3 millimeter thick elastic for the bottom of the minion. Now we used about 3 meters worth of that, one per each minion and about seven meters worth of two millimeter to three millimeter diameter strongish garden wire uh, from any good garden store to keep the domes intact. Okay, so once you've thought about how to progress, the most important stage next is your preparation stage. Now I find it helpful to just write a bit on paper about the maths behind the dome and the cylinders that are gonna be required to make the body. And when it comes to the actual formulas used, there's a, a few stages that you need to make sure you're aware of. So number one is the, the materials themselves, so materials and amounts. Uh, number two is the uh, actual cutout and shape of the dome, so shape of the dome and, uh, and its basic construction, so it's skeleton. And the third thing really apart from sort of lengths of string and all of this guys which you just kind of have to make up uh, is the actual net for the dome itself and that is uh, the net of the foam material so the foam insulation right so we're going to talk about materials and amounts first of all so one materials and amounts your minion is going to look a little bit like this chappy right Two eyes, cylindrical body, okay. Obviously then we've got a pair of dungarees, so we're going to have lower bit of the dungarees, upper bit of the dungarees, and there's going to be a little bit underneath here which is elasticated. It's going to have two straps, and it might have two buttons, depending on how you want it. It might even have a pocket, again, depending on what you want. Okay, so first of all this bit here, outside, Outside bit here is just yellow fabric, and it is a radius. Well, the radius from here to here is of the actual is of the actual um, uh, hula hoop itself. So radius equals hula hoop. In terms of this bit here, again, we've got yellow fabric. And now we've got to be thinking about the length of it. So the actual length of the yellow fabric is the circumference of the hula hoop. 
So yellow equals circumference of hula. And this is the blue fabric. And again, its length is the circumference of the hula hoop. Uh, the depth of the yellow fabric is something you're going to eyeball based on the person's height, but it's roughly three quarters of the entire depth of, uh, of one hula hoop to the next. The length between each hula hoop is uh, roughly five centimeters above the person's shoulders. So, whoop, funny person, five centimeters above. Arms down there. Knees here. So about 10 centimeters above the knees. So five to five. So in, in our case, it was about one meter. So we had about 75 centimeters worth of yellow. And across over here, about 60 centimeters worth of blue. Plus about 20 centimeters overhang to allow you to have a, a, a bit of a, an elasticated waistband to go around your legs. In terms of the glasses, they were made out of cardboard. Radius of about 20 centimeters for the little one or for the big one is about 30 centimeters. Uh, you're going to have to eyeball the amount of cardboard because it does vary depending on your sizes. Uh, inside, as I said, we've got, um, we're going to have uh, one hula hoop for the head, two hula hoops for the body, the head is also going to have four strips worth of, um, of garden wire keeping its shape and three smaller strips worth of garden wire keeping this, uh, the round shape. So it actually came out to be uh, about two meters worth each one of those. So two, four, six, seven, about eight meters worth of garden wire just for the head. Uh, foam wise, we're going to have about one meter squared of insulation foam cut into petals here, but because the radius uh, of the, uh, the hula hoop dictates its diameter, the actual length of the uh, foam required was around about 1.8 to 2 meters worth, depending on the size of the hula hoop. Uh, the actual depth of it is one uh, quarter of the circumference, so 1 over 4 times C equals the depth of the material required. So eventually, uh, we're going to go on to that in a second. Right, and in terms of the uh, foam for this bit, it's just the circumference of the hula hoop, which is about 1.8 to 2 meters, times whatever this height here was. So in here it's about 1 meter, so really we had about 1.8 times 1 meter worth of uh, uh, foam material. I hope that makes sense. Okay, for the shape of the dome, so two dome. Uh, we have a hula hoop, okay, its radius is R. We want to make a dome out of this, so we want another hoop, an invisible hoop, which is going to be half of a sphere, we're cutting out this half of a sphere. So its radius is also going to be R, which means that its total length of material is going to be half of the circumference. So if the circumference equals 2 pi R, then this particular value here, V, is going to be 1 over 2 times 2 pi r. Ah, okay, so simply pi times the radius. Right. In our case, that came out to be roughly uh, 45, I believe. Yes, roughly 45 uh, centimeters um, times 2. My apologies. 90 centimeters. Uh, again, then you wanted another set from here to here, going via the top there so that's your second lot of wire and then some wires around the top that's about 60 that's about uh, sorry that's about 40 centimeters that's about 60 centimeters and this one is about one meter 40 uh, to make your dome in total so that's the skeleton of the dome in terms of the fabric we have a length of foam required okay we want to have a little bit of an overlap so we put about 10 centimeters worth of overlap so that you can fold it under the edge of the dome. This bit here, everything above that overlap is going to be what I call the petals, so the bits that are going to fold in and make the dome itself. So in our case we wanted 12 of these petals because it kind of came out about quite nice. So we're going to have about 12 petals. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. 
not very accurate, but it's close. These 12 petals are split equally along this radius, so not along this length. The length of material, as again, is the circumference of the hula hoop. C equals about, in our case, 180 centimeters. So each petal, P, was around about 180 divided by 12, which, <laughs> goodness me, uh, came out to be around about 190 over 6, which is the same as 3 over 2. Let me over 2, which is 15. That's a bit too long. About 15 centimeters long. So P was about 15, so each petal was 15 centimeters in length. So now you can make some rectangles 15 centimeters wide by X high. The height, as I said earlier, was going to be this value here, so from here to here, that's the height. So that's actually half of V, so that was about 45 centimeters because V was 90. So height wise from here to here is 45 centimeters. Okay. When it comes to the petals themselves, the most interesting thing is uh, actually they have a specific way of being made to make a radius fit, uh, to make them fold up into the correct manner. Uh, because at the top here, the angle between the blades must be 360, which is the number of degrees in a circle, divided by, in this case, 12. So when you zoom in a bit, 360 divided by 4, 8, roughly there. So it's actually that angle there, and that turned out to be um, 30 degrees, 3 times 12 is 360, well, 3 times 12 is 36, times 10 is 360, so it's 30 degrees. And here, of course, because they're all going to be set next to each other, the angle here is actually 90 degrees. So one has to trace a circle of a specific radius between these two points to make uh, an actual dome flap, as it were, the petal shape uh, that, will, that will match. Okay, so the actual formula for the, uh, for the height here was 0.7708 times the, uh, the circumference of the circle that you're transcribing. So in this case, because it was about 180 the circumference, 180 times 0 0.7708 came out to be roughly 138 uh, centimeters. What's all this to do with, you ask? Well, it's 138 centimeters is the radius here. So imagining that is uh, the bit there uh, at 90 degrees. So you run a, a pen with a bit of string from here all the way back here somewhere. It's about 138 centimeters long and you pull it taut and you end up drawing a segment of a circle with radius of 138.75. Now the quick way to do this is to do that on a bit of paper. Mark out the right length, so mark out 45 centimeters high by uh, 12 centimeters wide, so 15 centimeters wide. A bit of A4 paper. Stretch a bit of string and a pen so that the pen only just touches the quarter bit, the, the left-hand corner of the bit of paper and just drag that arc a few times across. Hopefully it'll meet at seven and a half centimeters along. So let me just draw that bigger. So got a great big bit of paper here. Okay. I actually ended up sticking two bits of paper together because one bit of paper is not big enough. So I marked out 10 centimeters down here, cut it to 15 centimeters. At this point here, I attached a pen with a bit of string and that length there with this break was 138.75 centimeters in my case, but as I said, uh, radius equals uh, 0.7708 times the circumference of the hula hoop that you're using. From there, I then dragged that pen around there until it met in the middle, which is at 7.5 centimeters from the end. If it's the right radius, it will meet there. If it's not the right radius, it won't meet there. So get your measurements correct. Then just reflect that bit of paper down there so that you can have the next bit there. I then cut out this bit and gave myself a nice little net, sorry, a nice little template to be able to draw around like that. And give yourself a little bit of leeway as well. So give about a centimeter of leeway all the way around the edge like this until you get to the tip and then just fold it back in. So that gives you enough overlap to cover any mistakes. So then once you've drawn all of those, 
uh, with all the overlaps etc ready to just cut out along the edges around your centimeter margins you'll find the best way to do this anyway cut them all out double side the sticky tape along here job done so the dome is the first thing really that struck me as the most difficult to construct um, and then you can see from these videos uh, it only took about well about 20 minutes to make each dome and make the initial nets for the uh, construction from the foam that was then double-sided sticky taped onto uh, some rings uh, which had been pre-prepared with garden wire at the right uh, height of the dome using about uh, a quarter of the circumference again as the height for the dome now when it came to uh, actually measuring out the garden wire and making the dome it turned out that it was best to have a, a sort of subskeleton out of garden wire not just a crisscross but also three hoops of it at varying diameters uh, sellotaped or stuck onto the initial skeleton of the garden wire that way you actually ended up with a dome shape rather than sort of a weird pyramid format when it came to making the bodies of the minions we found the most useful way was to have two hula hoops connected by bamboo of a height to reach just above the wearer's shoulder, so about five centimeters above their shoulder, down to about five to ten centimeters above their knees. Doesn't really matter too much, but saves you knocking into the bottom of the frame when you walk. Uh, after measuring out the length of bamboo required, we then tied both ends onto um, one or the other of the hula hoops with string. You can drill through the hula hoop and put the bamboo in that way and secure it with glue. Doesn't really matter. With regards to the placement of the bamboos, they traced out the outline of an equilateral triangle. Uh, around the outside of the hula hoop. Uh, there were two bamboos as the front and one bamboo at the back of the body. Uh, once they were all together, you ended up with a nice uh, cylinder outline with three bamboos, two hula hoops. Then cover this with foam uh, along the circumference of the hoops with double-sided tape, enough to fold over the edges so that you can have a nice um, secured foam outline with a wraparound edge, made it easier and made it stronger. Now the goggles themselves we made out of some uh, cardboard boxes really. Uh, this is where you need your pair of compasses. All we did is we looked on the internet about what a minion really looks like and we found out that their eyes are roughly, uh, if there was one eye on the minion it was about half the, di the diameter of their head, so about one radius. And if they had two eyes, uh, those are about two thirds of the diameter of the actual head itself. So we found about 40 centimeters or 30 centimeters, uh, depending on if it was two eyes or one eye. So obviously the goggles outside diameter were going to be 20 centimeters for the one of the two pair of goggles or 30 centimeters for the single goggle. Arbitrary value of about three centimeters worth of rim and uh, that was then cut out as a ring of about for, for the one or the two. Uh, and the sides of the goggles were just made out of strips of cardboard around about 10 to 15 centimeters deep. Now you've got to bear in mind that you're going to stick that on top of a dome. So the, the, the deeper, the better, really. Um, later on in the process, one of those goggles had been made, the bare skeletons had been made and stuck together. We then coated them in just sheet paper, or double-sided sticky tape paper on so that we could be ready for spray painting them. And I found using some white labels cut into quarters, uh, so those little uh, letter labels that you get, so about those cut into quarters along their, their length, uh, you could then wrap them around the very edge of the uh, of, of the actual goggle to create a smoother finish rather than having the bare paper and paper over the top meeting in the middle because you don't want to get sellotape on the outside because the spray paint won't stick. After we'd sprayed them, after we put them all together, uh, there was a process of actually fitting them to the domes, but I'm going to come on to that in a minute. So once uh, the domes were being made, Emma's job here was to make the fabric to go around the minions. So the fabric itself had to be of length, the circumference and a bit of the of the actual hula hoop. So here is about 2.2 meters. And uh, you can see that uh, she's quite capably creating a sort of castellated format of the blue to match the dungarees, because at the front and the back of the dungarees there's raised bits, and on the sides there's lowered bits. So it's kind of like a castle when it's out. She eyeballed the, uh, the actual measurements by drawing on one of the cylinders, and I think that's the best way to do it. Uh, in terms of the yellow, it was the opposite really of that. The yellow has to stretch all the way to the top of the ring, but it doesn't have to stretch to the bottom of the ring at all, so an inverted castle really. Uh, for the dome itself, the yellow was really about a metre squared, draped over the top, and literally find your best way to do that. I think securing the front and back and sides 
then sort of concertina it in on itself and tuck everything under the edges and then every edge was sewed around the hula hoop that it was nearest so even on the body all of the edges sewed around the hula hoop okay so we then had to figure out how we we're going to fit the things onto a wearer so a harness was required uh, we thought about things like uh, just tying string around your neck obviously a dangerous and b very uncomfortable so what it turned out was uh, a couple of a4 plastic folders plastic wallets that you can use uh, when stretched out to an A3 size, actually uh, provided quite a nice oval shaped ring that you could fit over your head quite easily and then hole punch some holes into the side of them. So two holes at the front about the same width as a hole puncher and one hole at the back in the middle uh, for tying onto the rear, uh, rear strut of the costume. It turns out that the two front struts were able to then be stringed up quite tightly to these two hole punched holes. Um, so the harness was sitting in the middle, levitated quite well uh, at about a depth of 30 centimetres down from the top and the rear harness was tied on quite loosely also at a depth of 30 centimetres to the rear hole of this ring um, but it wasn't as tight as the front do. Then you could add two more holes slightly higher up so about the same height again as a hole punch slightly higher up this ring to add two stabilising uh, strings we found would be quite good so on the front two bamboos now about 10 centimeters down from the top so 10 centimeters depth we then tied two more strings uh, to the loop on its two new holes uh, again relatively tight but not quite as tight as the bottom ones and this kind of provided enough uh, lateral and forward and back stability the only way to really test it was to wear it um, but it seemed to work okay in the end okay so back to the goggles again uh, in this particular case I thought we need to fit these goggles which have flat backs onto a curved semi-hemispheric surface basically. Um, so to do that you get a bit of string and you tie it to a pen and you measure the distance from the end of the bit of string to the nib of the pen and that distance has to equal the same as the radius of the dome that you're going to put it on. So in this case the uh, dome of the minion which came, came to about um, 28 I think uh, uh, centimeters you then have to tie that end of string onto a bit of cardboard and pop the the, the goggles which have now been stapled together by the way um, dried from spray painting uh, you attach them to the other end and you make sure that that pen only just touches the furthest point of the goggles so lie the goggles sort of standing up on the floor perpendicular to the floor the pen is attached to the floor as well and the pen nib should only touch uh, the nearest, the, the furthest point of the goggles that you can make it. So it turned out to be around about the top right hand side and the top left hand side of the pair uh, or the very top of the single uh, dome because those are the bits that are going to be uh, the longest left basically. So then with that pen just trace where that string is at its tightest uh, all the way around the inside of the goggles and you should end up with this sort of strange looking shape which at the top has very little line whatsoever and right the way at the bottom where the goggles are going to be as uh, uh, the goggle line is going to be as short as possible so that the goggles still stay vertical with respect to the mask uh, the dome uh, you get about sort of two centimeters left worth of uh, goggle material so here it's imperative to have uh, enough material initially uh, of those goggles before you make them so that's why I said about 10 to 15 centimeters worth probably err on the 15 centimeter side of depth um, so once we marked out those then just simply chop off the remaining material with a knife or with a with a good pair of scissors uh, being careful indeed to uh, make sure you have enough and don't kind of go over the top if it doesn't quite fit increase the radius by about a half it looks okay goggles look like they've been a bit squished on but actually they still work fine okay so when it came to drawing the eyeballs onto the minions well there's one eyeball for the uh, Cyclops minion and of course two eyeballs for the uh, normal two-eyed minion. Um, minions actually have brown irises uh, but hey we chose to do green, blue and brown because of the people wearing them. Uh, I used some felt tips traced around the uh, double-sided sticky tape container to draw the irises and then sort of eyeballed literally uh, with a permanent marker the actual pupils. Now the darker you can get these things the better because you actually end up seeing through this bit in the end. When it came to uh, cutting the arms out, making sure that people can actually get their arms out of the things um, when they're wearing the costumes, 
put the harness on, put the minion in, make sure everything's adjusted so the top hula hoop is about five centimeters above shoulder level. Uh, and at this point, a very trusting friend uh, should get a knife or maybe a pen, probably better a pen, uh, and make a tiny little hole roughly in line with where your shoulder is, sort of in line with your body. So person standing upright straight where their shoulders would normally be, arms down by their side, and just poke a little hole through the foam at about midpoint of the shoulder on both sides. So it's slightly back from the center line. We found it was about 10 centimeters back from the first, uh, first two bamboos um, around the outfit itself. Uh, from that point, we made a five centimeter incision up, five centimeters uh, back, uh, 10 centimeters forwards and then the incision extended so this is basically a cross so far and from the original point make a, a line down to just above the elbow of the person wearing it so this will alter with uh, with size of person obviously change it as and when necessary so that they can get their arms in and out with care uh, around the, out of the foam uh, we then found it was best to line this with uh, with electrical tape and put a sort of a rip stop a uh, bit of electrical tape at the end, otherwise you end up getting a huge big gash when you really don't need it. So then, in terms of putting the smiles on, well, we got some pictures off the internet of various minion smiles. The black bit was just some black felt type material with sticky back felt, and the white teeth were actually just uh, standard labels for, uh, for an address uh, envelope. Um, I guess you can figure out how to do that. In terms of uh, getting the uh, the glasses to stay on the side of the head, once the head's been already covered uh, and the glasses had been uh, moulded into the right shapes, put the acrylic on the not the acrylic the acetate uh, strips, cut them out to around about the right size, and double sided sticky tape them onto the inside of the glasses from behind. Um, the next stage was to then carefully overlay where you want the eye to be over the dome itself, and imagine eyelids as well. So the eyelids themselves were just smaller than the glasses that were going to go over the top. The eyelids themselves were just cut out of the yellow. Uh, so th this point being very careful because you just spent all that time cutting those uh, yellow fabrics out and putting them over the domes. Um, we then double sided sticky taped the, uh, the sort of the loose uh, white material that the irises were uh, painted on uh, onto the inside of the eyelids as you'd expect from a real pair of eyes. Uh, it's a bit fiddly doing this because you're obviously between the yellow fabric and the white foam underneath. Uh, once you've done that, make sure obviously that it's in the right place uh, before you start double-sided sticky taping it. Have a look what it looks like through the glasses. If it looks good from that, then sort of push down on the double-sided tape and use a bit of sellotape to, uh, to secure it. Flip the dome over and cut out a hole in the white foam roughly in the same location as the iris, if not slightly bigger, so that then the person wearing it can see through the iris and see through the glasses, the goggles. Uh, this bit was the most sort of challenging bit because you'd already made the dome, but it worked okay in the end. Um, we then really just finishing touches, to be honest. The uh, the actual material was then put over the uh, the cylinders and sewn around top and bottom, as I said, and the armholes cut out of it where the armholes from the cylinders had been. Um, also some velcro was used to allow the head to be secured to the body without falling off when you're walking around and nodding around uh, sticky back velcro is good otherwise you could use sewn on velcro or super glue it would probably be best to be honest uh, because we did find the velcro wore off with time uh, once that was on everything aligned there was very little else to do um, so the minion was pretty much ready apart from hair uh, in terms of the hair uh, I found the best way was to use some A4 thick black card use a paper strimmer or a paper sort of guillotine uh, to make a, a sort of 30 centimeters length but one centimeter at the top and point at the other end so zero centimeters at the other end and cut out these triangles all the way down the guillotine uh, of this foam along its length axis um, and then get a circle of yellow material and with a with a craft knife or with a pen knife just poke in about half centimeter to about 0.75 centimeter slits in this sort of material, about eight or nine of them really. The the, the actual circle of material is about 10 centimeters uh, in diameter um, and the, the slits were put in randomly spaced. Um, then poke through the uh, these these pointy bits of card 
until uh, till they're all in there and then use some uh, scissors and just chop off uh, about so that there's only about an inch and a half protruding through the, uh, the thick end uh, then use a pair of scissors cut a slit down the middle of it and fold it out sort of so that one one leg goes one way the other leg goes the other way securing it in place bit of double-sided sticky tape on the back of that and, uh, and on any of the loose bits of yellow and then you're quite happy to sort of stick it directly to the top of the dome and there you go you've got a minion with hair hopefully with a pair of goggles that you can see through and uh, with a head that stays on the body the body fits your arms can get out elastic around the waistband along the bottom of the blue bit so that you can stick your legs through and have a good minion so thanks for listening to this instructable video hopefully it's been helpful uh, apologies if the instructions are a bit rushed hopefully um, the video itself you can freeze frame and see some things through it uh, if you have any questions uh, hopefully good ones do email or leave a comment below and I'll try and get back to you otherwise happy minioning and uh, do post your photographs cheers